I got these animals on a bit of a, a high protein creep pellet that I mixed with corn. And if y'all see that uh, that big fella over there with the with the yellow sticker on his back. So yesterday, uh, while I was uh, bidding on animals, while I was bidding on animals yesterday, uh, they were running them uh, in and out of the ring so fast. Uh, you know, uh, the cell barn was running the uh, the animals in and out of the ring so fast that uh, that I accidentally bought this one. Uh, I thought that I was buying a uh, I thought that I was buying a uh, black and white face steer with a uh, at about a 650 pound big, uh, black and white face steer. But they were running them in and out of the ring so fast that I accidentally bought this one. But I, I don't, I don't, I don't really mind. Uh, you know, if you take a look at this one over here, uh, he's kind of, uh, he's kind of skittish. He'll go running off. But uh, let me see if I can zoom in on him. You, you see that right there? You see how he's bone thin? But I'm telling you, uh, you know, when you go to the cell barn, you know, when you go to the cell barn and you buy these animals. He's 800 pounds. So uh, that animal right there, okay. I've always said that uh, these animals, you know, as they get older, they'll get taller. This animal is probably, uh, you know, uh, six, seven inches taller than any other animal that I have. I mean, this animal, he must be a year and a half old. He must be uh, close to two years old. You know, just from looking at his frame, uh, from seeing how tall he is, this animal right here, he probably uh, a year and a half to two years old. But he's only 800 pounds. You know, this animal at this height, at this frame size, should be close to 1,400 pounds. 1,200 pounds. And so, you know, a lot of these animals, uh, I'm telling you, when you go to the cell barn, you know, and this animal is actually a pretty good looking one. If you go to the cell barn and you take a look around, I would say, uh, I would say you know, about a third to a half of the animals are going to be bone thin. Uh, you know, are going to be somewhere between bone thin and thin. And, uh, you know, um, I've always said, you know, if you're not going to take care of your cattle, then you should not be in the cattle business because at the end of the day, I've always said, okay, so I've always said that, you know, money is more important than just about anything that you can come up with, right? You know, if, if, you're, if you're sitting there thinking about how you're going to go and make some money and you're being, you know, and you're being straightforward with yourself, you know, you're not coming up with these ridiculous nonsensical plans, you know, and, you, and you've come up with something like, oh, you know, tomorrow I'm going to wake up and look for a better job. You know, something like that. You know, if you've come up with a realistic plan and you're going to go and make yourself some more money, then, you know, money is more important than 99.999% of things that you could come up with. But money is not more important than everything. And when it comes to the cattle business, I, you know, at the end of the day, I'm taking care of animals, right? I mean, these animals are very important to me. You know, these animals are living creatures. And so it's like, you know, if you're not going to care about your cattle, you should probably not be in the cattle business, right? I mean, you know, why, why put your animals through that? And then, you know, you're going to put your animals through that and then, and then you're just going to lose money anyway. And so if you take a look at the rest of my animals, if you take a look at him, you can see he's, 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 he's thin. He's very thin. And so, uh, and then if you take a look at the rest of my animals, you're going to see that the, uh, the, uh, the, almost all of my animals are, you know, I would say every single last one of my animals just about are at a better body conditioning score than him. And if you take a look at him, you can see, you can see his, uh, his hip bone sticking straight out the side, you know, and you can actually see if, if, if I could get up closer to him and show y'all, y'all are going to see that you can see the bones on his body. I mean, he's, he's, he's thin, you know, he's thin. I would say, I would say he's at a body conditioning score of about a three or a four. And in terms of a cell barn animal, this is actually a good one. Uh, you know, if you go and you take a look at the animals in the cell barn, uh, you know, if you go and take a look at the animals at the cell barn, a majority of them are going to be bone thin. I mean, uh, you know, emaciated type type level. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of animals, they're going to be like a year and a half old and not even a thousand pounds. Legitimately, you know, they're going to be like a year and a half, two years old, and they won't even be a thousand pounds. And it's like, you know, uh, you know, that animal at that age, at, at, at a year and a half to two years old, if they're at a body conditioning score of five, they should be at least like 1,100, 1,200 pounds if they're a medium large frame animal. You know, uh, you don't want to be, uh, you know, and I've always, uh, I've already said this like 50 times. If your animal is bone thin, you are going to lose money on it. So if you're going to lose money on it anyway, you might as well just feed the animal and, and uh, lose the money that way. Right? I mean, just take care of the animal. 
right? I mean, don't let your animal be bone thin. You know, if you're going to get in the cattle business, if you are legitimately looking to get into the cattle business, if your animals are bone thin, you're going to lose money anyway. This animal right here, he should be, he should be 12, 1400 pounds. If he was 12, 1400 pounds, the, the, uh, the seller would have made like an extra, you know, uh, probably an extra four, you know, five, six hundred dollars on this animal, right? I mean, this animal at this size, at this body frame should be about ready to go to the processor. I mean, look at how tall he is, right? I mean, he's as tall as the hay ring. And, you know, uh, and to put, to put things into perspective, this animal right here, this red one right here, this red one right here, this heifer right here, look, I mean, this heifer right here is probably about 100 pounds lighter than him. And she's about six inches shorter. You know, he, he, uh, he hit the scale at 825 yesterday. This heifer right here is probably close to 700 pounds. And he's almost like a, a foot taller than her. And take a look at him. He's bone thin, right? But if you go to the cell barn, I'm telling you, if you go to the cell barn and you take a look around, almost all, like half of the animals are either going to be bone thin or thin. Almost half of them. Very rarely are you going to see a, a, a well-conditioned animal. I actually did see a, a, a good set of well-conditioned animals yesterday, but... Uh, but it's, it, they're not the average. Almost, you know, a, a lot of the animals are going to be thin. They're going to have blubber on them. They're going to have some kind of issue with them. They're going to have some kind of a problem. You know, you're going to have to fix them up. You know, you know you're, going to have to, you're going to have to work on them. A lot of these cell barn calves are like that. A lot of these cell barn cattle are like that. But this animal, I, but look, look at him. Look at him uh, standing next to the, uh, look, look at him. I mean, he must be six inches taller than he is. You see, you see the, the, the difference in the frame size right there? He's about six inches taller than he is, but he's only a hundred pounds heavier. And you know, uh, you know, this animal's bone thin. Imagine being six inches taller than somebody and only being, uh, you know, 8% heavier than they are, right? I mean, you know, th that's not good, right? I mean, that's very not good. But a lot of these animals at the cell barn look like this. I'm telling you, they look like that. If you go into the cell barn and you take a look around, they're going to look like this, right? And if your animals look like this, you should probably not be in the cattle business to begin with. You should probably not, you know, because it's like, okay, you know, this animal right here, if he was fed properly, an animal at this size should be about 12, 1400 pounds. Look at how big he is. I mean, he's tall. I mean, he's got, he's got a, you know, he's obviously some kind of a beef animal and he's bone thin and he's still 825 pounds. If this animal was fed properly, he should be about uh, 12, 1400 pounds right now. And then if the animal weighed 12, 1400 pounds instead of 800, you would have made more money on the animal. This is what I've been trying to say, you know, the entire time. But, uh, you know, I, I've decided that I'm going to keep him for a little longer. I'm going to keep him. Uh, I was like, you know, I could just turn around and sell him at the cell barn and get my money back for him. But, uh, this animal, he's obviously had a very hard life, right? I mean, this animal's obviously not had a, a very good life, and uh, he's a steer. He's already been castrated and everything. And that's my, you know, I've already, you know, I've already said that uh, me, you know, when I castrate my bulls, I always, I always like, I make, I make an agreement with my animals when I castrate them that I am going to give them a good life. I'm going to, I'm going to feed them. You know, I, I will feed them and I will give them, I will give them what they need. I, you know. That is what I always tell my animals. When I castrate my animals, I always tell them, you know, uh, you know, like I know that this is not the uh, the, uh, the the greatest situation, but I, I promise that I'm going to take care of you. I promise. You know, I give you my word. I, 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 I you know, I'm going to take care of you. That is what I tell my animals. You know, uh, like, you know, if you're going to put your animals through all this, you should probably not be in the cattle business. And if you are in the cattle business and you, and you are doing this, this is a very good example of somebody who is a tard, right? If your animals look like that, you are a tard. Congratulations. Admit it to yourself and then do better tomorrow, right? I mean, your animals should not look like that. This animal, look at how much taller he is than all of the other in my animals. Look, look at how tall he is, right? Genuinely look at him. I mean, you can just see him. I mean, he's legitimately a foot taller than all of my other animals. And he's only about 100 pounds heavier. That's not good. And this is what I've been saying the entire time until now, right? The entire time. If you do not feed your animals, you are going to lose money anyway. And if you are going to lose money anyway, you might as well just take care of your animals. You might as well just feed them. 
Because if you had just bought $600 worth of feed and just gave it to the animal, the animal would have been, you know, drastically heavier. And then you would have made your money back. You know, your animal would have been 800 pounds six months ago. Right? And then you could have sold him six months ago and made the same amount of money. Probably even a little bit more. I mean, you would have made about the same amount of money. But this animal right here, I figured that I'm going to keep him for a little bit. I'm going to keep him for a little bit. He's obviously very tall and he's obviously very thin. So he's going to put on weight very quickly. I wouldn't be surprised if he puts on 120 pounds a month. You know, an animal that is this size, he can eat a large amount of food. You know, he can eat a very large amount of food. And so, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this animal right here puts on 120 pounds a month. And so I'm going to I'm going to put about 150, 200 pounds on him. I'm going to take care of him. I'm going I'm to fix him up and then I'm going to sell him and I'm just going to make my money back on him. Because I take a, I take a look at him and I'm like, you know, I could sell him. I could sell him uh, next week and just make my money back and just get my money back on him. But I mean, this animal's obviously been having a, a difficult life, right? I mean, this animal's obviously been having a difficult life. I mean, uh, somebody did, I mean, whoever was taking care of him did not take care of him properly. I mean, it's very easy. I've always said, you know, you know, if you take a look at a man's cattle, you can tell you can tell what's going on with the man. Right. And, uh, you know, whoever's been raising this animal has obviously uh, not been taking care of him very properly. The animal's massive. You know, I can probably put a, you know, 120 pounds on him a month. You know, I probably can. I mean, he's he's a massive fella. I mean, he's going to eat a lot of food. He's going to eat a lot of food. I can put weight on him very fast. And so I'll put a, I'll put 150 pounds on him. I'll get him fixed up and then I'll take him to the sale barn. And then, uh, you know, but yesterday I was talking about if you are looking to, you know, if you are looking to be in, you know, if you are looking to be a business owner, you should not be trying to start your own business. You should not. And I've already said, imagine, OK, because me, I'm in the cattle business, right? Imagine that you were looking to start a cattle business tomorrow. Imagine that you were looking to start a cattle, a cattle business tomorrow. Do you think that you can compete with me? I've already said that when it comes to money. When it comes to money, money is the same for everybody. The dollar that I make is the same dollar that you make. It is the same dollar that your buddy, buddy, pow, pow makes. It's the same dollar that your family makes. It's the same dollar that and it's the same dollar. Everybody is looking to make the same dollar. So when you get into business, you have to understand that you are competing for dollars. So if you are looking to get into the cattle business, do you think that you could even remotely compete with me? remotely like even to a to a, a small degree do you think you could compete with me you probably can't i'm just gonna be honest i would run you over so hard you wouldn't know what to do you legitimately i mean you would you would look like you were handicapped if you were farming and i was farming and people took a look at us people would think that you were handicapped right i mean legitimately you cannot compete with me more than likely you cannot so you should not be trying to start a business. If you, if, okay, okay, and here's the thing, is that if you are looking to throw money at something, if you are looking to throw money at something and make a return on it, and that is what your idea for a business is, you should not be starting a business. You should go and buy a business. Go and buy a business, because if you buy a business, all you have to do is take a look at the numbers, right? Make sure everything adds up. Make sure the money is actually there. Make sure they are actually making the amount of money that they are saying that they are making. Make sure the money lines up, right? Make sure just, just go and make sure that everything lines up. And then you can go to the you can go to the bank, take a loan, you can sell or finance the deal. You can just finance the deal and then use the money from the business to pay for the debt service and then keep the extra money. Right? I've already said this 50,000 times. Right? If you are legitimately looking to just throw money at something, and make money on it and then call that a business you should not be starting a business a lot of you you know you don't understand what it takes to start a business if you start a business it turns into a life or death scenario i'm, I'm serious you are going to work seven days a week you know and then if you cannot compete on like a global scale if you cannot compete if you cannot compete on a very high level you will not make any money because that is the that is the realities of business Business is essentially a competition for dollars. Business is a competition for dollars. And the dollars that I am making is the same dollars that you will be making. It is the same dollars that your buddy, buddy, pow, pow will be making. It will be the same dollars that everybody else is making. So business is a competition for dollars. 
if you cannot compete at a very high level, you will get crushed and then you will lose everything. Nobody will save you. You will lose everything and then you will live in misery forever. You will, you know, if you lose everything to that degree, you will genuinely be miserable forever. And if you really, 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 for whatever reason you want to run a business, if you want to run a business, in reality, you should be buying a business more than likely. And here's the thing. Here's the reality of a business. I've already said, you know, yesterday I was saying that if you start a business and you only make enough money to, to make a decent living, if that is if, if you start a business and you are legitimately working at that business seven days a week for like 10 hours a day and you only make enough money to have a decent middle class living, I would consider that a failure of a business. And so if we just add up all of the businesses, businesses that are barely making enough money to just live middle middle class, like you are not, you know, you're not in some like a, you know, financial haven. You, you are making just enough money to be middle class. If you are bankrupt or if you are losing money, if we put all of those businesses together and I and I and I made a bet with every single last one of y'all that wants to, that, that are saying that you want to start a business, every single last one of you. Right now that is saying that you want to start a business and that you're going to end up in one of those categories. You're barely going to make enough money to live some sort of a middle class life. You're going to make enough money to, to live a middle class life or you are going to go bankrupt. If, if I made a bet 10 to 1, I would come out profitable. Almost everybody is going to end up in that in that section of the economy. You're going to make just enough money to live a middle class life. And it's like, why would you work seven days a week, 10 hours a day? You know, if you include your commute, it might be 12 hours a day. Why would you give up 12 hours of your day, seven days a week to make like $80,000 a year? I do not understand. You could have done that by just working a job and then just working 40, working half as much and just working a job. I do not understand. Keep your poorness to yourself. I don't want to understand. Right. I mean, why would you do that? You know, you're legitimately working twice as much for the same amount of money. I do not understand it. I, I don't want to understand it. Keep your poorness to yourself. Right. I mean, I do not understand if you and if you genuinely want to run a business like you are genuinely dead set on running a business, then go and buy a business. And when you go and buy a business, make sure that there is enough cash flow in the business to float the debt service from the money that you are making on the business itself. So if the business is making $15,000 a month and it costs you $5,000 a month and there's $10,000 a month of free cash flow, right? Something, and I've always said, if you want to look for something like that, then you should be looking at businesses that do not have real estate. The moment you get real estate involved, it's going to cost, it, it, the, uh, the cost of the business is going to go up exponentially. You know, you can go and you can, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, be a route, uh, be a be a route man. I mean, you can go and uh, put a uh, put bread up on the shelf for Prep Ridge Farms. You can be a pool cleaner. There are a lot of businesses out there that do not require real estate, and they sell at like a one times EBITDA multiplier. You, they make like a hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, and they're selling for a hundred twenty grand. You know, if it's selling for a hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, and you take a you take a twenty year loan for a hundred twenty grand. I mean, you're legitimately going to be coming home with like eight, nine thousand dollars a month, even after you pay for your new truck and you can tax deduct your new truck. Right. I mean, you should not be trying to start a business. Most people should not be trying to start a business. Business at the end of the day is a competition for dollars. And, and, and at the end, and, you know, I'm not saying money is everything, but money is more important than ninety nine point nine 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 percent of things. You know, if you if you want to have, you know, whatever your la la land journey, you're probably better off just making money. Right. I mean, whatever it is, more, more than likely money's more. I'm not saying money's more important than everything, but money is probably going to be more important than just about anything that you can come up with, right? And if you're trying to start a business, if you're looking to start a business, you have to understand that at the end of the day, business is a competition for dollars. Do you think you can compete on a global scale? Because that is what money is. Money is the same for me as it is for you, as it is for your family, as it is for your buddy, buddy, pal, pal, as it is for everybody. Money is the same, right? This, I'm making the same money that you, it is just as hard for me to make the money as it is for you or as it is for anybody else. So do you think you can compete on a global scale? And if you can complete, if, if you can compete on a global scale, then you can make money. 
But if you cannot compete on a global scale, you cannot make money. And if you are looking to run a business, you should buy a business. Do not start a business. If you want to take your $2,000, like, you know, like me, when I started my business, you know, I started off with 12 grand, right? I started off with 12 grand. You know, within the first year, I had made almost, I had made 90 grand, right? I had started my business with $12,000, and within 365 days, I had made $90,000, right? If you want to do, if you, if you think that you are capable of something like that, then go ahead and start a business. If you genuinely believe that you can put $12,000 into something and make $90,000 on it, then do it. Right? At that point, you should do it. But if you cannot turn $12,000 into $20,000, if you cannot, if you, you know, if you cannot do like if, if you cannot make money where you are right now, how do you th how do you think money is going to help you? It's not. You know, it won't. You know, if you cannot turn $10,000 into $100,000, you cannot turn $100,000 into a million dollars. If you cannot turn $100,000 into a million dollars, then you cannot turn a million dollars into $10 million. It's just not possible. You know, it gets harder on an exponential scale. The more the reason, and here's a very logical way to think about it. The reason why most people do not make money is because money is extremely difficult to make. You have to compete on a global scale to make money. Money is almost impossible to make, right? That is why most most people are not making they're not sitting there not making money because they don't feel like making money. They're not making money because it is excruciatingly difficult to make money. You know, but okay, but here's the thing, right? And yesterday I was talking about my uh, my insurance or excuse me, I was talking about my investment portfolio, right? Things that I am invested in right now. And what did I talk about? My real estate, my life insurance, my whole life li uh, insurance policy and the S&P 500 via a Roth IRA. And let's say we take a look at what I'm talking about right now, right? Let's say just we just run the numbers on it. And then y'all are going you are going to understand by what I mean by when I yesterday I said that if you just jump one centimeter higher, if you just jump one centimeter higher, you are essentially in a new universe. And this is what I mean. You should not be having this life or death battle on a, on a daily basis to accomplish mediocre things. You should not. A lot of people are in this life or death battle every single day over mediocreness. You know, they, you know, you are going to wake up tomorrow and be me. I can almost guarantee you, if there are 500 of you watching my video right now, 499.9 of you are completely screwed. I can almost get, I would be willing to bet 10 to one odds, right? If you had an honest conversation with me, I mean, it does not matter how much money you make. There are plenty of instances. There are a lot of people who make like $150,000 a year and they are still living paycheck to paycheck, right? They're still a tarp. They are, they are making $150,000 a year and they still act like a tard, right? It, it happens all the time. It's not, it's not just, you know, if, you, if you're making $40,000 a year, you know, you could be just as poor as somebody making $150,000 a year or somebody making $250,000 a year. I've always said that money, you know, if you want to get out of being poor, it's very simple. It's not a set amount of money. It's not a set amount of money. You do not need to go because, OK, if you are having problems when you are making forty thousand dollars a year, if you make one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, chances are your problems are not going away. Your, your problems are just going to continue to persist. Right. I mean, you are still going to be as poor tomorrow as you are as you are today. Chances are, right? If you are making forty thousand dollars today and you are having a lot of problems, if you're making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a day tomorrow, a year tomorrow, a day, it doesn't matter how much money we're talking about. If you are making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year tomorrow, a day tomorrow, chances are your problems are going to be just as bad. You're still going to be a tard, right? I, I can almost guarantee it. I would be willing to take the bet ten to one, and and I and I would make money on that bet. Right. I've always said if you want to not be poor, the only the the most reasonable way to not be poor is essentially to just make more money than than you need. That's it. That's it. You don't need a set amount of money. If you legitimately woke up tomorrow and you just and you just, uh, you know, got a better job in that. And then you didn't self-sabotage yourself and you, uh, you know, uh, you uh, invest. And OK, but here's the thing that I was talking about yesterday. And we'll, we'll run the numbers on what I was talking about yesterday. Yesterday, I was talking about the Roth IRA, right? You can put money into a Roth IRA and just buy the S&P 500 and don't worry about it, right? Just buy the S&P 500, $6,000 worth of it a year, I think is the limit. I mean, you can uh, add up to $6,000 to your IRA a year. And then uh, you put $6,000 in your Roth IRA a year. 
uh, and you, all you do is buy the S and P 500. That's five hundred dollars a month, right? That's five hundred dollars a month. And then you buy life insurance. A whole, uh, you know, I said that my uh, my my uh, my investment portfolio, other than the cattle and the and the real estate, is my uh, whole life insurance policy, right? And I pay two hundred fifty dollars a month for it. So right now, you know, and you know, uh, my whole life insurance policy. By the fourth year, I can uh, I can take a loan against my insurance policy at a zero percent interest for the amount of money that I have put into the insurance policy. All of the money that I have put into my insurance policy, I can essentially take like 80% of that money back out of my life insurance policy on a 0% loan. And if something were to happen to me, my brother would get a check for like, th for like 25 grand. And then by the time I'm 70, I can essentially take a, a loan against my life insurance policy for hundreds of thousands of dollars at 0% interest. And if something were to happen to me, my brother would get a check for like half a million dollars, right? I mean, you know, uh, you know, uh, at, you know, but if you want to know what a whole life insurance policy is, I've already said the way you do it. I said this like 50 times yesterday. You just call your state farm agent. I got my life insurance policy. I got my whole life insurance policy via a state farm agent. Just call you a state. Just look up state farm insurance agent on Google and then just call them and ask them. I want information on a whole life insurance policy. That is, you know, that's all you have to say. And they will tell you, well, if you pay $250 a month, uh, you know, and then they'll, they will show you a chart and that you can take a loan against your insurance policy starting at this point in time. And it will be for this amount. And, uh, and your, uh, your insurance policy will grow at this rate. Uh, by the time you are this age, your insurance policy will be worth this much money. And you can take this much of a loan against it at a, at a 0% interest rate. And, you know, but, but listen to what I'm saying, right? $750 a month. So to have a Roth IRA, to have a Roth IRA with the S&P 500 in it and to have a life insurance policy, to have a whole life insurance policy that I can take a loan against at 0% interest, it costs $750 a month. And now, now just anticipate that you are an average person. You are an average person working 40 hours a week. You are just dead set normal, right? You're not below average. You're not above average. You're just working 40 hours a week. You are an average person like 90% of the entire population, right? I mean, a majority of people are probably working about 40 hours a week, right? And so let's just say you're average, right? Let's say you're average and you come up with this, with this, uh, this investment plan. And you're like, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to wake up and I'm going to call my State Farm agent. I'm going to call a State Farm agent. And then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go on a, you can even go on like a, a Webull. You can go on a, on an app on your phone. Nowadays, you don't even need to call a stockbroker. You know, you can just download an app on your phone and open a Roth IRA for yourself. And then you're just going to buy the S&P 500, right? You're just going to buy the S&P 500. You're going to buy $500 worth of it a month. And then you're going to go and get yourself a whole life insurance policy that you can take a loan against at 0% starting at the four-year mark. You're going to do the same thing that I'm doing, right? So now we're talking about $750 a month. And the average person works 40 hours a week, right? About 175 hours a month. So for you to make enough money to essentially have an entire retirement account set up for you, all you need to do is wake up tomorrow and make an extra five to seven dollars an hour. That's it. If you make an extra five to seven dollars an hour and you do not self-sabotage yourself, you open up an, a retirement account and you, and you, and you uh, in, invest in a whole life insurance policy. If you make an extra five to seven dollars tomorrow, an hour tomorrow, that's all you do. You find a job that makes you an extra five to seven dollars an hour. You don't self-sabotage yourself and you started a retirement account and you purchased a whole life insurance policy. That is all you have to do. I'm telling you, you don't need to go and throw some Hail Mary. You don't need to start a business. You don't even need to buy a business. You know, and if you really wanted to like go and do something like a, like you really wanted to push yourself, maybe you should start looking at making an extra $15 an hour. How are you going to do that? I don't know. Your talents are different than mine, right? I mean, maybe, you know, if you know, you can go and drive like a forklift for like $25 an hour right now. You know, if you, if you drive a forklift and you can even work in a refrigerated building, you can, or not refrigerated building, you can work in like an air conditioned building and drive a forklift for like $25 an hour, right? There are a lot of things that you can do for $25 an hour. You can work at a, you can work at a decently bu a busy restaurant, a decently busy restaurant. 
you can work at a, a decently busy restaurant and make like $25 an hour right now. It's not hard. Making $25 an hour is not hard. You know, even realistically making $35 an hour is not impossible, right? I've met a lot of people who are like, they went to a community college and got a two year degree. And now they take x-rays of people and they're making like $50 an hour. I met one young lady who just, uh, you know, who's a dental assistant. She's not even a dentist. She is a dental assistant. And first year on the job, first year on the job and she's making $35 an hour and she has a two year degree. It's not hard. You know, don't turn life into this life or death battle for mediocreness, right? A lot of people, it's like, you know, you are like a flea in a jar. Do you have these life or death battles over nothing? And it's like, if you just jumped one centimeter higher, you would legitimately be in a different universe, right? I mean, you should not be trying to start a business. If you are looking to throw a Hail Mary to start a business, I mean, you're, you're not going to make it. I can almost, you know, I can almost guarantee every single last one of you that are saying that you want to start a business, every single last one of you that are saying that you want to start a business, if you are even considering it, if you spoke to me, I would all, I would take a bet 10 to 1. I would take a bet 10 to 1 that, that every single one of you are going to fail. And I would include you just making enough bit money on your business to have a middle class life. I would consider that a failure as well. If you are making just enough money on your business to have a middle class life, I would consider that a failure of a business. And I would take a bet 10 to 1. Every single last person that is saying that they want to start a business, I would take a bet 10 to 1 that you fail. And I would still make money on that bet. Most of you are saying you want to start a business because you are a tard. You don't know what's going on. You, you legitimately, you are about to throw a Hail Mary. That is your plan. You want to throw a Hail Mary and it's going to work out for you in some mystical, magical fashion. But I am telling you, like starting this business was almost impossible for me almost impossible like you know i you know i don't you know i don't know how but if you want to understand what i'm saying you should go and 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 try and start a cattle business for yourself go and start a cattle business for yourself nobody's stopping you you live in a free country granted that you live in america go and uh, you know stop being a tar tomorrow and just go and actually do what you say right like if you genuinely think that you can run cattle like me nobody's stopping you right the only person that's stopping you is you right but I mean, you know, but at the end of the day, you are also a tard and you should be stopping yourself because if you got in the cattle business tomorrow, you would get wrecked. You would wreck yourself and then I would run over your dead body, right? I mean, it's just not going to work out for you. You cannot compete in the cattle market. I can almost guarantee you. I can almost guarantee it because business at the end of the day is a, is a competition for dollars and everybody is competing for the same dollar. If you want to make money like me, you are going to have to be as good as me at farming. And if you are not as good as me at farming, you are not going to make as much money because business is a competition for dollars. You are not going to make as much money as me. And you're also going to have to compete against me. I will leave you to die and then run over your dead body. Right. I mean, I seriously, I, I, you know, if you are going to start a cattle business, I'm very happy for you. I hope you succeed, but do not latch on to me. I do not care. I legit, if you die tomorrow, I do not care. I do not latch on to me. Right. If you are legitimately looking to start a cattle business, then go for it. Nobody's stopping you. You live in a free country. Right. I mean, nobody's stopping you. I'm very happy for you. I hope your cattle business works out for you. I hope everything works out for you. And I hope everything uh, turns into a la la land adventure for you. I genuinely hope it does. But don't latch on to me. I'm not going to help you. I don't care about your worthless deal. Right. You know, do, do not offer me some some pathetic, nonsensical, you know, tarred type deal. Do not offer me that kind of deal. I do not care. Right. Do not. offer. You know, I do not care about your five grand. I don't even care about your 50 grand. All right, do not offer me your worthless deal. I make, I, you know, when I start, you're going to see, I, I make 50 grand in a month. Y'all are going to see here in a little bit. I'll make $50,000 in one month. And then you will crap yourself, right? I mean, just just, just give it give it about three months. I will make $50,000 in one month, right? I don't care about your 50 grand, right? I don't want you latching on to me. Don't latch on to me, right? I don't care. You could die tomorrow. I genuinely don't care. Don't latch on to me. And no, I do not care about your worthless deal.
right? I mean, if you actually came up to me and spoke to me about business, I would, there is, you know, there is a 99.99% chance that I would think that you are a tard. Okay, don't offer me your deal. I don't care about your deal. If you want to go and start a cattle business, nobody's stopping you. It's a free country. You can go and do it if you want. Do not ask me for help, right? I'm giving you all the free help that I can. This is, you know, I... I give I give free help. This is this is the best that free help is going to get, right? If you do 99% of the work by yourself. If you do 99% of the work by yourself, you've come up with some a business plan and you know you're uh, looking to uh, get started and and you uh, you have a very uh, thorough well thought out plan or you know and you got something good, and then you you have done 99% of the work by yourself. And you want help on, on 1% of it. And you offer me $15,000 for 2 hours of my time. If you just want me to take a look at your plan or take a look at your field or whatever it is, take a look at what you're doing and then say, I would do this, this, this differently. You know, if you have done 99% of the work by yourself and you want me to come by and take a look at it for two hours and you give me a $15,000 check, then sure, I'll do it, right? Sure, I'll do it. But you got to understand that right now I have a lot going on. I have to run my own business. I'm looking into buying more land. You know, I got to open up new loans. I got cattle that are about ready to go to market. I have a lot going on for me. I do not want you latching on to me. I don't want any of you latching on to me. If you latch on to me, you know, you are going to take me down with you. You don't understand that you are legitimately a tard and you will take me down with you. So no, I'm not going to, no, I'm not going to save you. I'm not going to save you. It's not my job, right? It's not my job. No, I'm not going to do it. If you do 99% of the work by yourself and you want help with 1% of it, you want me to come and take a look at what you're doing, you know, take a look at what you're feeding your animals, take a look at, uh, you know, how you're growing your grass, what kind of animals you're running. You know, if you just want me to come by and take a, a, a look over your business for about two hours and you give me a $15,000 check, sure, I'll do that, right? If you want me to come by and take a look at what kind of grass you're growing, what kind of cattle you're running, what kind of feed you have your animals on, what kind of medication program you have your animals on, how much you're paying per animal. If you want me to come by and take a look at stuff like that, then sure, I'll do it. And then you can pay me $15,000 for two hours of my time. Right. I mean, but don't latch on to me. If you're looking to start a business, if you're looking to start a cattle business, I'm very happy for you. Right. I'm very happy for you and I hope you succeed. But don't latch on to me. Right. I will leave you to die and then I will run over your dead body. I'm serious. I do not care if you if you were legitimately dying of thirst on the side of the road, I would not piss into a cup and give it to you. Don't ask me for help. Right. I'm serious. This business was almost impossible. If I was going to try and if I was OK, so if I were to go, go out of my way to start this business for you, the moment I left, you would self-sabotage and implode. Your business would fall apart the moment I left and then you will latch on to me again. All the time you will latch onto me. You're not going to sit there and suddenly go, oh my God, you know, I'm going to work 20 hours a day for the next 365 days. You're not going to do it. You're not going to be able to figure it out. And then the moment things get hard for you again, you're going to latch back onto me, right? You're going to latch back onto me and then you're going to beg me for help and everything. And so don't ask me for help, right? I mean, you're a tard. You're, there's a reason you're poor. And the same reason you're poor today is going to be the same reason you're poor tomorrow. It's going to be the same reason that you're poor last week. It's the same reason you're poor last month. It's the same reason you're poor tomorrow. It's the same reason you're poor forever. You know, and if you just jumped one centimeter higher, you would be free of the jar. You would legitimately be in a different universe, right? You don't need to, you don't need to go and, you know, uh, you don't need to go and start a business. You don't even need to go and buy a business. For most people, if you just, if you just got a job that paid you an extra $15 an hour, if you found something, some way to make an extra $15 an hour, you would be free of the universe that you are in. I mean, uh, granted that you did not self-sabotage yourself. If you took the money that you were making and, uh, you know, you took the money that you have and then you buy your a middle-class home and you buy yourself a decent car and then you you started a Roth IRA range just put the S&P 500 in it and then you bought a whole life insurance policy I mean if that was what you did with the money you would be not poor you would be rich tomorrow you would be rich tomorrow you would you would cease to be poor effective immediately you don't need a set amount of money you don't need a set amount of money. You essentially just need to jump one centimeter higher. But jumping that one centimeter higher for almost everybody becomes a life and death battle. And this is what I mean by if you, when you talk to a lot of poor people, everybody's going to act like a flea in a jar. Almost everybody's going to act like a flea in a jar. Once you see it, you cannot unsee it. Everybody is practically a flea in a jar. 
everybody. I can legitimately sit here. You know, there are a lot of people running cattle, right? I can sit here and I can show you. I run 50 cattle on 10 acres. And my cattle are one to one and a half type medium large frame commodity animals. I put them on this ration and I genuinely make like $14,000 in a month, right? I can show it to you, but you will act like a flea in a jar. You will, you, you, you will act like a flea in a jar. I almost guarantee it. Oh my God, that's not possible. That is not possible. You know what, you know, and then, then you will go on this, you know, this, you will act like a tard. I can almost guarantee how yeah, I would bet I, I would be willing to bet 10 to 1 and it's not just farming you got to understand that this is how it is for almost everything it does not matter if we're talking about money I could legitimately tell you that you know and, and, and I could legitimately show you that if you just make an extra $15 an hour you could eff effectively not even be, not be poor anymore just by making an extra $15 an hour you would effectively not be poor tomorrow as long as you did not self-sabotage yourself right I can show you that. I can legitimately show it to you and you will still act like a tard. I mean, you know, I can almost guarantee it's not it's not just it's not just farming, right? I mean it's business, it's investments, it's spiritual, whatever you want to talk about. I mean, I can almost guarantee, guarantee, oh my god, that's not possible. That is just not possible. Oh my god, I can't believe it. 50 cattle on on 10 acres. Oh my god, not possible. One to one and a half type medium large frame animals. Oh my God, a cow is just a cow. That is not possible, right? I mean, one to one and a half type medium large frame animal. I can essentially tell you that a one to one and a half type medium large frame animal is essentially the beef that you are buying when you go to the grocery store and you will still just go, oh my God, a one to one and a half type animal. What is that? Oh my God, that's not possible. Everything's impossible. You will turn everything into a life or death battle, right? I've already told you. A one to one and a half type commodity animal when you go to the grocery store and buy beef and you're buying like a t-bone steak and it's 10 to 15 dollars a pound that is essentially what you are buying is a one to one and a half type commodity animal right i've already told you that like 50 times a majority of these animals are one to one and a half type commodity animals when you go to the grocery store and buy a regular pound of beef if you go to the grocery store and buy like a buy like a T-bone steak for fifteen dollars a pound, you are essentially buying one of these animals, right? I've already told you that like fifteen times, and I've already told you that the uh, you know the value of the feeder cattle is essentially marked by the feeder cattle price on the commodities market, right? And then you're gonna go and oh my god, I fell out of heaven a seven. My life is a mystical, magical journey. Why would I take my time to learn any of this? I fell out of heaven a seven. You know, you are going to act like a tard no matter what. It does not matter what we're talking about. It could be about business. It could be about, you know, money. It could be about cattle. It could be about anything. I can almost get, I would take the bet 10 to 1. Everything, you know, that's what, I, that's what I've been saying, you know, almost if you try and do anything, if you tr try and jump one centimeter higher, it's all, it turns into a life or death battle for almost everybody. Almost everybody, right? I mean, almost nobody is trying to even attempt to jump one centimeter higher, right? Nobody, you know, and that, that's also what I mean by leaving your cave, right? You know, and this is what I mean by thinking about what you're thinking about. You know, like right now, you know, I'm looking at buying a 50 acre piece of land, but I'm thinking about skipping that step. I'm thinking about skipping that step and just going to the bigger piece of land, right? Buying like 100 acres. You know, I'm just going to skip the 50 acre step and just go to 100 acres, right? If the, I, you know, I, I put in my last offer for these people and if they do not start to negotiate with me, I'm going to leave them to die. You know, there's a reason you are poor. You can keep your worthless 350 grand, right? $350,000 worth of real estate is such a pathetic amount of money. You know, three hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of real estate. You can get a three hundred fifty thousand dollar loan to buy a piece of real estate right now for like two thousand dollars a month. Even with interest rates where they are right now, it's going to be less than two grand. If you go to the FSA, the Farm Service Agency, and take a loan, they will give you a forty-year term loan at four point seven five percent interest. That's like less than two thousand dollars a month for three hundred fifty grand. Do I look like I care about two thousand dollars, right? Do I look like $2,000 a month is what's going to make or break me? Be honest, right? I'm running 50 cattle. Do you think I'm more concerned about running 50 cattle than I am $2,000? Yes, I am absolutely more concerned about running 50 cattle, right? If I get 50 acres of land, I'm not worried about the $2,000 a month that I need to pay for the land. I'm worried about the 200 animals that I'm going to have to raise when I have the piece of land, right? I'm not concerned about these, these you know, nonsensical lid on a jar type things, right? $350,000 worth of real estate, not cash. 
$350,000 worth of real estate is a minuscule amount of money. It's a minuscule amount of money to the point where it's like pathetic, right? I, you know, I, I'm, and I'm not, you know, I, I gave these people one last offer. If they don't want the offer, then I'm going to leave them to die. You know, it's, I'm not here to save people. That's, you know, I, I, most of the time people cannot be saved under any circumstance. People cannot be saved. You know, almost everybody, once you've become a flea in a jar, you will be a flea in a jar forever. You will be in a, you, you will be a flea in a jar forever. You know, you could legitimately wake up tomorrow, find a job that makes you an extra $10, $15 an hour, take the money, start a Roth IRA, just put the S&P 500 on it, download an app on your phone like Webull, start a Roth IRA, buy the S&P 500, just put, it in the, just put it in your Roth IRA, it's $500 a month. You can go and buy a whole, you know, you can go and uh, call your state farm agent tomorrow, buy a whole life insurance policy, ask them about, uh, you know, ask them about the policy and uh, make sure it's a 0% interest loan and, uh, uh, you know, t ask them to go through the policy with you and then you can invest $250 a month on that. And then with your, uh, you know, uh, with your extra money and the money that you have right now, you can buy yourself a middle class home. And, you know, if you make $5,000 a month as the husband and your wife makes $4,000 a month and your child makes $1,000 a month, you can essentially live a middle class class to upper middle class life forever and i can legitimately tell you all of that you know you just have to jump one centimeter higher and then it will turn into a life or death battle oh my god but you don't understand oh my god you know th there's a reason you're poor right i mean there's a reason you're poor and the reason you're poor today is going to be the same reason you're poor forever i mean there's you know, the, the reason you are poor today is going to be the, the same reason you were poor yesterday the same reason you were poor last week the same reason you were poor last month it's going to be the same reason you are poor forever right I, I can almost guarantee it i mean you're a flea in a jar you're a flea in a jar and you're you're pretty much i mean all you have to do is jump one centimeter higher and if you jump one centimeter higher you're in a different universe right I mean, you know, don't self-sabotage yourself, right? I mean, that's that's all it really takes. It's it's not some it's not some life or death battle. You know, everything is like, oh my God, well you don't understand. It's like it's like you know, uh, you know, you're a tard. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. I mean, if you want to turn life into a life or death battle for everything, then then feel free. I mean, I can say the same thing about you, right? I mean, I mean, uh, if you want to know what it's like to run a business, if you want to know what it's like to start a business, nobody's stopping you, right? Nobody's stopping you. Don't latch on to me, all right? Go and start your own business tomorrow. Go and start your business tomorrow and knock yourself out. Have a blast. See, see how that turns out for you. All right, see if what I do is easy. You know, a lot of you, if you tried to start a business, your backbone would turn into a wet noodle. I mean, you would fall apart. You would never figure it out. It would be too hard for you. You would throw a tantrum. You would, you know, uh, you would give up on yourself and then you would quit. I can almost guarantee, I would, I would take the bet 10 to one odds, you know? I would take the bet 10 to one odds and I would still make money on that bet. But that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.